name's Stuart McAlpine. I'm a farmer from the Buntine Maya area in Western Australia. I farm about 5,000 hectares and been farming um, with um, regenerative practice probably for since about 2006. So really just trying to um, focus on building carbon in the soil and using less artificial inputs and focusing on allowing um, the plant to um, interface with the soil biology by sort of feeding the soil biology to sort of um, mine the mineral matrices in the soil to keep building new soil and new carbon and sort of making the whole system more efficient. I think it was just for me to share some of my um, journey and some of my knowledge and just perhaps getting people to think about um, you know some of those experiences that have sort of allowed me to sort of say ah you know that's what's going on because I think there's just not a lot of support out there for farmers to transition to this type of system and no one sells it like you're actually utilizing nature to become more efficient so you are still adding things in don't get me wrong but not to the level that we've become so dependent on today in more conventional farming systems. So we've had this, this was my uncle's property and my cousin farmed it and I took it over in 2004 and then um, yeah basically I started sort of focusing on sort of biostimulants in 2006. So it's probably taken a little bit longer to shift because it takes more energy to move some of the heavier soils but the changes to this, these soils are, are like night and day compared to back then. Like they're just so friable, you know, even when it's dry, you, it's just crumbly, the texture's good. Um, the water infiltrates really quickly. Um, and yeah, and the profitability of these paddocks is, is really good because they are naturally more fertile than some of the sandy soils back over at my place. So I think, um, I, look, I firmly believe it is more profitable because I believe that um, when I sort of look at my um, profitability in the short term, I think it's quite comparable to a lot of farmers, lower input, lower output, but profit margin is quite good. But I know that I'm building that natural fertility, that natural capital in my soil that, that does have a value. Um, I'm not sure we know exactly what that is, um, or we can actually, you know, bank it or, or, or claim it, you know, or put it on the asset sheet. But, but I know it's there, you know, because I see that in the soil structure, the efficiencies that I'm, that I'm getting. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm really comfortable with the fact that I've been able to transition through this system um, probably fairly cost neutrally. Well, I think for me, regenerative agriculture is, um, is producing um, food, but also improving the environment and in particular the soil that we grow our food and fibre and shelter and everything else in. So, you know, I think for 10,000 years we've been very extractive in, in our soils. You know, we can do it really quickly now because we can extract that natural fertility very quickly and then we replace it with fertility that's come from the destruction of natural capital somewhere else, ironically or usually. Um, so it's really consciously saying, yes, we can feed and clothe and do all those things that agriculture must do, but not only can we do that, we can actually grow the resource, grow the soil that we farm on so that it's increasing in value and in efficiency as we go and capturing the beautiful sun's energy through the photosynthetic protus and pumping carbon, you know, it's a big battery, we're pumping energy into the soil uh, and in improving the efficiency of, of that and, you know, in turn releasing more minerals and improving the quality and nutrient density of our food, not only just when we look straight at minerals but all the complex sort of chemicals that are created in, in producing that food which I think we're only just beginning to understand how vital they are to the health of um, you know us as humans but also the animals that we might indeed consume after they consume the grass that we're not very good at consuming. Yeah so we're, we're looking at some, um, some stuff around natural capital accounting through Region WA, Common Land and um, through Sue Ogilvie um, over east. Um, the soil CRC through Whitbelt NRM are looking at some um, work around sort of regenerative practices as well and sort of comparing them sort of in the area. Um, I'm hoping that we might see some of the Maloon work on my property as well, but obviously that'll depend on funding and where they choose to put that. Um, but I like to create, I think the idea of a hub's really good because you can have a field day and talk about numerous things. Um, obviously doing a lot with wide open agriculture with perennial shrubs and sort of meat and that going forward. Um, very excited about the lupin plant-based proteins and the lupin project that we're also looking at with wide open agriculture. I would like to see animals make a very massive return 
turned back into the system and really focus on um, strip grazing, multi-species, um, trying to keep reducing that um, chemical use um, by, by moving more back to some grazing practices uh, and using the animals to, to play their role in rebuilding the soil as well and adding that extra diversity. Like We've got animals in the system but I think we could be using them a lot better. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you'd like to know more about Smart Soil or see more content like you've seen just then, um, be sure to sign up below and also check out our online course with Colin Sice.